let's start. Go with, with me. We're not going to be long. Isaiah chapter 61. 61. I mean 60. Isaiah chapter 60. He says, Arise. And I love... I love what the Amplified says. Amplified puts it beautifully. It says, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Arise from it. Arise from the depression. And um, this week we were, this past week, man, I, wanna, I just want to say this. This is maybe just advice. Stop watching rubbish on social media. Stop forwarding, stop forwarding depressing um, things that, that weaken your faith. Stop watching, stop entertaining things that's, that's weakening your faith. Start fueling your faith. Stop putting stuff on that makes you negative about the country. Don't go into depression. You need to come out of depression. And God is saying, arise from it. You know, when we speak, we, we're the light. We're the light. We're on the side of light. We give hope. We don't give doom and gloom. Let's fill our minds with, 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 with hope. Let's fill our hearts with, with light. Amen. I'm telling you, if you do that, if you do that, look, South Africa is in trouble in many ways. But if you're just watching the news, if you didn't watch any news, you probably wouldn't have even thought about that. So when you go out, you see there's real genuine people. You see there's real things, good things happening around us. All right? Yeah. And we need to be on the, on the right side. We don't want to let darkness, come on, bring us yeah. into fear. Amen. 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 I think that's very, very important. You do yourself a big favor. Stop watching. If you know it's something negative, don't watch it. I'm okay if you guys want to be informed. It's fine. It's fine to be informed. We need to know, you know, where's the economy going, this and that. But um, if things are leading you to be in a place of fear, that is not, that's not your portion. You're called to, to prosper. I've said it many times. Even in famine land, you'll prosper. You have um, um, a promise from God. <laughs> about concerning your children. He promises a, a bright future. He promises the Holy Spirit. He promises that He's going to gift us with His Spirit. That is the truth. Amen. So you are bright lights. You are light and there is darkness. And sometimes we forget that this is a fallen world. That we're in a place that is not perfect. We're in a place where bad things happen. But... We're on the winning side. Amen. So let's just read that. He says, Arise from the depression in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Woo! Rise to a new life. Shine. You know, and this is, this is really what the, when the Bible says repent, it doesn't mean say sorry. Did you know that? That's not what repent means. Repent means change your mind means stop thinking the way you're thinking. Change the way you're thinking. Change the direction of your thoughts. Turn. So repentance means I'm going this way and now I'm going this way. That's repentance. It doesn't mean sorry. So when I say repent, it means change your mind. Interesting. Change your mind. Change the direction in which it's going. Come on, let's change our mind. Let's get full of hope. He says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and darkness peoples but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you i love it it's so beautiful so the the glory of the lord is going to be seen on you people will point and how do they see wow that's a child of god there's something different about that person i want to be with that person Will Johnson said it so well. He said, we owe the world an encounter with God. We owe the world an encounter with God. That's what we owe them. Come on, let's stop entertaining negative conversations. 
Our hope is not in politics. And our hope is not in the political party that you support. <laughs> whether that be DA, whether that be um, ANC, EFF, if your hope is in these guys, uh, forget it. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean we don't vote, go vote. Vote for your party. <laughs> but our hope is in Jesus. Yeah. Amen? So we need, we need a people that think differently. And, and um, um, this is one of the cool things that I thought came out of the conference. Sometimes, we, especially when, you, when you're newly converted or when you experience Jesus, you think, you think well, maybe I need to become a preacher. <laughs> maybe I must go into the ministry and I must go preach. And it's not... It's not not necessarily the truth. Um, and I think this is changing now in the world that we're in. That w I believe, look, we need preachers, praise God for preachers, but we need more men and women of God in businesses and in places and in marketplaces. And in, we need men and women of God in, in the schools as teachers. I want to, like, I don't know if there's a teacher here, but if you're a teacher, man, you've got a, you've got a bigger ministry maybe at this stage than me. You've got a more influential position in the kingdom if you're a teacher. <laughs> if you can stand and teach, man, awesome. If you're working with people's lives, you're working with their destinies, we need to be there. That's where God is positioning you and positioning me. Imagine you go to school every day with this mission and agenda about bringing life and bringing hope to those kids. Ne? Yeah, amen. And I think if we can realize that our place, that we're in a daily place, in a, our circles of influence, our families, uh, the people we work with, God has positioned you to be there as your ministry, as your, your place of influence. And you guys, and well, including, I'm part of it, but where, if you guys will go and take what I'm saying, Isaiah 61, and say, arise from the depression, it doesn't mean you need to go and shout, repent. It means let's genuinely bring light into darkness. Let's genuinely bring hope into a dark world. My kids, I need to remind myself every day I go home, I'm, I'm bringing light to these kids. I'm bringing hope to these kids. I'm nurturing them, growing them in an environment where they can believe that they can succeed and be prosperous and, and, and give Jesus to people. Come on, man. The, I, I really feel that there is a shift, and I said it at the conference, there's a shift um, to a degree in evangelism e even. Some people are going to travel the world and go preach. I said, yes, Lord, I don't want to go. Every time I go preach somewhere, when I leave home, even if Donato and then pick me up and we're going to Clarksville, I'm, oh, I don't want to go. I want to be with my family. And sometimes some of us will go. But the real field is where you are daily. That is the field. That is the, the place where God has sent you every day. Come on. If people leave us, they must be able to say, yes, I'm different. Uh, people must want to be in our company. I think we need to wake up every day and wait for opportunities of just where you can give a word of encouragement to someone. I never, I'll never forget the one day... I parked in a bus zone. I was driving like a, um, a white Iveco. And I parked just to get something at a garage. And the guy that was driving with me jumped into the, uh, into the, uh, out of the car, went into the garage. This was so cool. Next thing I see someone come to me with a, with a book, with like a little book. And he says, yeah, do you have my package? Um, no, he said, are you the guy I've been waiting for? So I said, no, and so he said, no, I just need my package. I said, yes, I'm the guy that you've been waiting for. And I gave him a word. I said, hey, man, Jesus loves you. Come here, let me pray for you. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. If we can do that. If we can do that. One of the things that I stopped doing now is I stopped asking people if I can pray for them. I don't want to give them an opportunity to say no. Someone comes to you and says, yes, I've got a headache. You've got a headache. Give me your hand. 
I command that headache to go. <laughs> Do it. I dare you. You'll see how that the headache goes every time. Let's just be a blessing. Amen. So he says, Arise and shine. Arise to a new life. Shine. He says, Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul says here, he says, For if we are beside ourselves, mad, as some of you say, it is for God and concerns Him. If we are in our right mind, it is for your benefit. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 13. Okay. So, <laughs> this is so cool. So, I don't know how many times people might have come into our church and said, yes, these people are mad. <laughs> Maybe you saw something that's going on a bit funny. They're mad. He says, Paul says, that doesn't concern you. That's between you and God. And he says, between him and God, or whoever's mad. You know, um, Friday night, I was lying on the floor. Someone from an outsider comes in. He, he like, you know, like Jabulani said, this is crazy. This is off. You know? But that is for me and God. That's for no one else. But then he says, but if I'm in my right mind, it is for you. How many of you guys know, <laughs> for the benefit of people, you need to be in your right mind. <laughs> it don't help we try, go out and carry on like something crazy and we miss the harvest because we're not in our right mind. You know? Um, so I gave this example. You can be in the presence of God here at the church and you can be rolling on the floor and you can be crying and weeping and experiencing the Holy Spirit. But you can also be behind your office desk typing an email and be so full of the Holy Spirit and be in your right mind. All right? And this is what we need. We need people who are full of the Spirit that can, that can be in their right mind. <laughs> and they can, that can actually, for the benefit of people, give direction um, and uh, give words. And I love uh, the one testimony of this, this one lady. Um, she's such an amazing teacher. Uh, Anya and I really enjoyed to listen to her. But she was saying that she was working in this office environment and she saw someone come in. And uh, she, she feels like she wants to, um, she wanted to give this woman a word saying that she's going to have a child. It's a very dangerous thing to do. So if you have a, don't just give words, but this, this woman, she felt this very dangerous, especially about children. Don't just go give words about children. But she felt this woman needs to have a child. So, so she, she goes... She goes into this room and she felt, my goodness, I didn't want to do this. And most of the time I'm like that. I didn't want to do it. She opens the door and says, sorry, I want to speak to you. Um, um, do you have children? She asks. He says, no, we've been trying for years and years and I can't. Yes. And she says to this woman, and she, obviously she was giving a discussion between God, must I really do this? And she said, a year from now you will have a child. In an office environment. My goodness, a year later, boom, there's the child. And um, that is our mission field. Come on. I personally, I don't need to, I think going on an outreach is more beneficial for me because it helps me realize who I am in Christ. But if I'm going on outreaches and I'm not reaching where I am, what's the point? Okay, so come on. So let's, let's, let's be sensitive to what's happening around us. Let's be sensitive to where we are, the people we, we daily encounter, and let's bring hope. Let's, be, let's bring hope. Let's do something. Let's not become part of the problem. Amen? Amen? Most of the time, my faith feels like everybody's going that way. 
I'm going that way. The stream is running that way and I'm going that way. And sometimes it's lonely, but I need to keep looking forward. People going down that way, I'm going this way. And if you feel the pressure of the whole world drifting down that way, you don't go that way. You go this way. God is calling you the opposite direction. Amen. Amen. Toby Max sings a song. He says, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down fighting. <laughs> if the country is going down and I see I'm going down, I'm going to go down fighting. In a sense, believing that the kingdom of God can be manifested in and around my areas. And we're going to see it. We're going to see it. We are going to see it. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go to John. We go to John 14 and John, John 16. Ach, John, yeah, John 14 and John 16. We're going to do that. He says, yeah, don't let your heart be troubled. How many times do we have to hear that? Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. John chapter 16. Verse 33. He says, I've told you these things so that you may have perfect peace and be and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I've deprived it of power to harm you, and I've conquered it for you. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm trying to think. So every time I hear of something, whew, my heart gets troubled. And God wants us to be free from that. Um, I had, I listened to uh, this, this one guy speak about when you're watching a rugby game and the PVR and recording the rugby game. And he says, sometimes it's nice to know that who won before you watch the game. <laughs> he says, if you, want, if you watch the game and um, if your side is losing 60, you 60 and they 100, and there's 10 minutes left and you're losing but you know the result even though it's not lucky to see your team lose you know we're going to win <laughs> and he gives us the end result and he says the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of God <laughs> and he says I've got plans to give you a future yeah man so you know the outcome you have a PVR recording right here <laughs> That says you're winning. <laughs> you're not losing. You've got, you've got this game. It's yours. The cup is yours. The victory is yours. And you don't have to let your hearts be troubled. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my, thank you, my Father. Father, I just thank you. You called us to be light. Lord, where you demonstrated that you are the light of the world. You told it, you said it, that you are the light. But you now said that we are the light of the world. Help us realize, like Paul says, help the eyes of our heart be flooded with light and understand so that we can know the hope to which he has called us. This glorious hope. That we can know the power which is at work in us, which was demonstrated in Christ Jesus. That it is alive. And that it is at work in us. Oh, we pray and I pray in the name of Jesus for the church, for these people, for the church in general, in our city, that will arise and that will step out in the victory of Christ Jesus of the cross and will be a, begin to gain ground for the kingdom of God in our areas, in our workplaces, in our families in our homes that the glory of God the peace of Jesus Christ the kingdom the way you do things will rule and reign around us I thank you for that I thank you Jesus thank you Jesus 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.